Welcome to CCTV America's coverage of the World Economic Forum here in Davos, Switzerland. Thousands of world leaders, security, and media are converging on this small Swiss town with a very strong history. Of course, they've hosted the forum many times because it happens every single year. I'm now joined by Tracy Tannen, who will be providing coverage throughout the week with us Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and you have been looking around the city and you've learned a lot about the history of this small town. Well, we both have, Phil. Today's been a really interesting day. We've been scoping out the Davos, a beautiful alpine town in the middle of the Swiss Alps. Clearly, you can feel the energy and the excitement on the ground. A lot of construction happening, people shoveling the snow, making way for all these leaders and presidents and heads of state that are going to be arriving over the next 24 hours. Hasn't it been quite exciting here in the last 24 hours, Phil? It, it's amazing how this small town when we first got here it was relatively quiet and now it's over the next few hours in the next 24 hours it will literally transform uh, as we watch it do so. You know, this year is the 44th annual World Economic Forum, and clearly Davos has been hosting it every single year for many years now. But uh, a lot of people question, what is the significance of the World Economic Forum? Has it perhaps lost its charm having been run for so long? But let me tell you why the World Economic Forum continues to remain one of the most significant and powerful economic events in the world today. It's like the Oscars of the economic world. Delegates from all levels of importance and nationalities are descending upon Davos, a quaint alpine town 5,000 feet up in the Swiss Alps, where the air is pure and the energy electrifying. Over the past 40 years, the World Economic Forum has invited the who's who to meet and discuss the state of global affairs. This year, some high-profile attendees include World Bank President Jim Yong Kim, Microsoft founder Bill Gates, Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfein, UK Prime Minister David Cameron, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, and President of Brazil Dilma Rousseff. It's a very heady experience because everybody is very friendly. There is, there is much less security between people than usually you would have for, for people at this, this level. And you meet people in different parts of the world stage that are doing different but very interesting things. Uh, whether they're NGOs or government representatives or, or CEOs of companies. The World Economic Forum was founded in 1971. Klaus Schwab, professor of business policy at the University of Geneva, chaired the first meeting, which saw 440 participants attend from over 30 countries. The organization was then called the European Management Forum. In 1979, the forum released its first global competitiveness report, the document that measured the ingredients of economic growth and prosperity. In 1987, the group changed its name to World Economic Forum, expanding its scope from a European to a global organization. In 1992, Nelson Mandela attended the forum and made his first speech on South Africa's future. In 1994, Israeli Minister Shimon Peres and Palestinian Liberation Organization Chairman Yasser Arafat reached a draft agreement on Gaza at the World Economic Forum. Perez and Arafat held hands and walked on stage together to a thunderous applause. In 2002, following the 9-11 terror attacks, the forum moved its annual meeting to New York to show solidarity to both the city and the American people. Since its inception, the World Economic Forum has had considerable impact on economic, political and social agendas. It's also been the catalyst for some significant bridge building. Now, whether it's the appeal of the Swiss Alps or the opportunity to bond with global leaders, this year the World Economic Forum is going to see around 2,000 participants from across 100 countries discussing agendas at this Congress Center right here behind me. What is the context of the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum 2014? I would characterize this context by three words. First, cautious optimism. Second, diminished expectations. And number three, many known unknowns. While the theme of the conference changes every year, the powerful underlying message of the World Economic Forum remains the same. The need for global cooperation on all levels at all times.
A lot of issues on the agenda for the World Economic Forum this week. Some of the key things that they're going to be covering is youth unemployment. Phil, what are some of the top agendas that you're looking forward to the most? Well, there's so many, but I think the short list is going to be what they've put on the main agenda, which is the youth unemployment issue, income inequality, gender inequality, all of these things. They've, they've been really important, but they've been overshadowed by the financial crisis. And this is really the first year that they're going to have a chance to really focus on these core issues. That's right. Poverty alleviation is also going to be a big topic this, uh, this week. Yeah, and the other big story, of course, is the security around this small town. I had a chance earlier. In fact, both of us did. But we looked around at some of the security measures that are taking place, and it's all going to change in the next 24 hours. It's beginning to snow in the city of Davos, Switzerland, where 2,500 delegates from around the world will begin to convene for the World Economic Forum that's held here every single year. And with that, these gates will close in the next 24 hours, staffed by military police, security, and the Swiss National Army as they work hard to ensure the safety of prime ministers, world leaders, and of course the hundreds of media that's convening for this event. While they've hosted the forum every single year, there's still an uncomfortable and unease about the city. They work hard to clean the streets, shovel the snow, hundreds of pounds of food come in for the visitors, but the city itself essentially shuts down for an entire week as they work hard to cater towards their international guests. The success doesn't depend on the outcome of the meetings, but rather the safety and happiness of its visitors. And once all that security is in place and world leaders are safe, official events for the forum will begin tomorrow evening. The bulk of the events will be between Wednesday and Saturday, and CCTV America will have a lot of insight interviews that will be available throughout the week, both on this show and also available online. Wednesday will be highlighted by the address by the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. On Thursday, CCTV will be hosting a special event looking at both the cooperation and the competition that goes on between China, the U.S., and Europe. On Friday, gender equality around the globe becomes a major theme. We will have the president of the World Bank. We will have the president of Harvard University. We'll get their take on what it takes to be a leader in this global economy. There are numerous other events taking place all week long, and we intend to cover the events for you.